Not bad for mid-December. Hi everyone, welcome to Calibia on Cap Bon. Calibia is most famous for its 16th century fortress, I guess, which is back that way. We drove past it on the way in, uh, but today we are checking out the beach. This is Plage City Mansour. It's just outside town and it is in the summer extremely popular. So last time I was down here was in July or August, I think, and this was packed with people. Right now, completely empty because it's December. I think someone needs to get rid of all this seaweed. But yeah, fantastic white sand beach and it stretches all the way around that corner and then there's an even longer section on the other side uh, past that shipwreck that you can see down there. I can't believe it's mid-December and we've got this sunshine. This is going to be my last update this year on the channel because I'm heading to Europe for Christmas for a little bit and then I'll be back to get on with this project uh, in 2021. So what I thought I would do today is kind of talk you through a little bit of the background to the project writing this travel guide and then give you an update on how it's going so far so what i've got done talk about what the plan is for 2021 so how i'm going to get it all finished next year and then finish with a couple of reflections on things i've enjoyed about exploring tunisia so far some highlights that kind of thing so let's dive right in so if we start with some background on the project i signed the contract to write the brat travel guide to tunisia in february this year so not ideal timing uh, in terms of coronavirus coming along, but who could have known that? So the original plan was I was going to submit a finished manuscript in June 2021. So I kind of agreed to a 16 month process of researching and writing up the guidebook. So in those 16 months, it's going to travel all over the country. Obviously, got slightly delayed there because I've spent a good few months locked down in Tunis uh, when we were fully locked down starting in March and then we've had a bit of a travel ban uh, to varying degrees so not actually allowed to move between governorates and obviously a lot of businesses have been closed at various stages. Uh, I actually wrote an article about this which is on the Brat website so if you want a few more details on all of the problems we've had writing this then I'll put a link in the description below and you can click on that and read through. So what have I got done so far? Now when I look at a map, I'm actually surprised that I've managed to go to most places in Tunisia so far. So I think out of the 24 governorates in the country, I think I've probably been to about 20 or 21. It doesn't mean I've written up a section for each of those. And as you can see on the channel, it doesn't mean I've got video for every single one of those places. So a lot of them I'm actually going to need to go back to. So to give you an example, I traveled down to Jerba over the June, July period, but I kind of went down there on holiday. <laughs> so spent a lot of time kite surfing, relaxing with my friends, didn't really spend much time researching the guidebook. So I, this is probably a good thing because I loved it. I'm now going to have to go back to Gerba at some stage in 2021, probably before the summer, and run around and collect all the information for all the tourist sites on the island there. So I've been most places, but I need to go back to a lot of them to finish off the research. So the part of the country that I've covered in the most detail and actually written a whole chapter for is the Northwest. So that's the four governorates, including Jenduba, Beja, Siliana, and Kef. So that's completely done. I don't need to go back there, or I'm, although I'm still going to because I want to go surfing in Tabarka again. And now I've actually managed to get myself a Tunisian surfboard. If you're in Tunisia and you're wondering where you get surfboard from, uh, Bell Aqua surfboards. I think they're the only shapers in the entire country and I will put a description uh, link in the description below if you'd like to commission a surfboard from them. They're fantastic. I've used it once so far on a surf session in La Masa. It's been really, really good. I'm also close to being done with the Cap Bon Peninsula, which is where I am right now. So I've traveled around most of here and also Bazert. So the kind of northern section of the country is looking pretty good. Now the job really is to swing southwards and try and get as much of that done as possible at the beginning of next year. Plan for 2021 is try to get the guidebook done. I'm gonna aim for June. We'll see whether that happens or not. But yeah, I have a lot of the Southern governorates to get finished and I really wanna start 
as far south as possible before it gets hot. This is exactly what I said last year, and then we didn't manage to, to get that done. So yeah, uh, all the areas around Duz, Tuzer, Chot El Jarid, already been there, but I'd like to go back, collect some more information. Likewise with Tatooine. So those are gonna be the areas that I'm gonna be focusing on at the beginning of the year when it's a bit cooler. And then as we come to spring and summer, I'm gonna work my way back up until we get back up to Tunis. Now, of course, it's not just about writing. I am also going to be sharing videos with you on a regular basis as I explore the country. And I think one of the aims for 2021 is also to try and publicize the YouTube channel and the guidebook uh, a little bit more effectively. So I've had a few suggestions from people on that. I'm going to try and do a few radio interviews, uh, maybe try and do some press to point out what's happening and get people excited about the guidebook when it does come out. Let's finish with a few reflections on the year, talk about some of the things that I've enjoyed most about being here in Tunisia. Now, I actually landed in Tunisia. I flew in on the 3rd or the 4th of January this year, and I haven't left since. So I've spent an entire year here in the country. That's probably the longest period I haven't got on a plane in my life. <laughs> but I can't think of a better place to get stuck than Tunisia during the coronavirus. I mean, I think the government handled it pretty well, especially when you look northwards and make a comparison with uh, my home countries of Italy and the UK, UK in particular, things aren't going so well over there. So life hasn't been as disrupted here in Tunisia as it has been in much of Europe. It's been a difficult time for a lot of people. It's, it's affected my work, but I'm very, very lucky in the sense that I, I still have a job I really can't complain too much and obviously the weather in Tunisia is beautiful so it's not really been too bad although I didn't really enjoy getting locked in my apartment for two weeks with the uh, robot running up and down the street telling everybody to get back inside. In terms of the things I've most enjoyed it's been a whole a whole mixture really. I really enjoyed traveling around the northwest especially the area around Tabaka, Eindraham up in Janduba governorate. It's just so unexpected I mean it looks like Switzerland or somewhere in the Alps. Uh, it's, it's very different from what you'd picture when you imagine coming to Tunisia so I'm really excited to share that part of the country with potential tourists who would probably think the same as me. They, they would never imagine that you'd have these mountains and pine forests uh, and all of it leading down to a beautiful coastline. I also really enjoyed my time in Djerba. I think we spent two weeks down there in the summer. We rented an Airbnb uh, in Humtsuk, so in the Jewish quarter actually. I mean, the place has a fascinating history. One of the oldest Jewish communities in North Africa there, and also superb in terms of kite surfing. So one of the best places in the world to learn to kite surf, which is exactly what I did. And yeah, it was cheap, it was safe, it was really well run. So I would really recommend Djerba as a kind of beach holiday destination, especially if you're into kite surfing or windsurfing or something like that. I've also really enjoyed exploring the Southwest. So kind of Toza, Duz, Chot El Jarid area. I mean, those are spectacular desert landscapes. That's more the kind of thing you think of when you think holiday in Tunisia. Obviously you've got all the Star Wars sites, which people get very excited about. And you've got some really good options in terms of accommodation all the way from backpacker hostels right the way up to some fantastic luxury hotels. I'd like to end this video by saying thank you very much to everyone who's been supportive of this project so far, people who've been watching the videos, sharing the videos, uh, but also just interacting with me online. So especially the Tunisians out there who've reached out to give me a hand. I can't believe how many Tunisian people have got in touch with me to help me with suggestions in terms of accommodation or tourist sites. I've had people reach out and help me with translation when I've asked for it. Uh, people have suggested different businesses that I should include in the guidebook, people I should speak to, uh, especially on Reddit. So the Tunisian community on Reddit has been really, really helpful. So thank you guys. That's, it's been awesome and I hope that we can continue to collaborate next year. Uh, it's going to be a much, much better guidebook because of everybody's inputs. Obviously, you know the country much better than I do, and so it's great to have some local insight with people suggesting places that I should go to and things they think I should include. Wish me luck heading through Tunis Airport later this week, and I will see you all in 2021. Bye.